Welcome to the Intelligent Health Solution. You're seeing here is the dashboard. You can see there's about 3,800 content items, 102 assessments, and 76 care plans. We go into the content. It's going to give a list of all these content listed, sorted by their code number. I'll give an example here. This first getting started video. If I click on the view, you're going to see the backend metadata, the, the last review date, the identifiers. This is a video, but we have a transcript of it, and we have it in both English and in Spanish, and we can go to multiple languages. We also have multiple versions of this video, including a Spanish translation version of this video. If I click on the box, it'll bring up from the asset column. It's going to have the raw file the closed captioning, and then the a thumbnail of the actual video, so you can actually view the video right here. And then also over here you have the tagging data, the category, the coaching strategy, and the care plan that is associated with the content item. We can also go back up. There's other filters. You can do a full text filter if you're looking for a specific uh, word or item. So you can type in kidney or renal or plant-based, and it's going to pull up everything that that search term is in the entire document, not just in the title, but anywhere in the document that that search term appears. You can also search by the care plans are listed here in alphabetical order, but you can see the different, there's atrial fib, blood pressure, coronary artery disease, cardiac rehab, cardiometabolic, cholesterol, different coaching plans and strategies, diabetes, glucose, heart failure, and then other um, mini plans on weight and stroke and physical activity, nutrition. You can also categorize by the category. This is really our vocabulary, our the language that we're using in the care plans. You can see it's a pretty long list, both clinical but also programmatic types of terms. You can look at the different levels. We have basic, advanced, and also professional facing content. We have different coaching strategies. We have a basic. And then because we know this is not a one size fits all, we have four segmented versions of each of these plans. So the director, the expert, the listener, and the motivator. And these are not trying to label an individual. They're about describing a coaching strategy. And then finally, we have the different content types. I showed you an example of a video, but also we have animations. So you can click in here, click on the view, click on the link, and this is an animated version of a heart failure asset. And here's an example of an atrial fibrillation animation, a blood pressure animation, and finally a cholesterol animation. We also have infographics. These are pretty rich types of illustrations of content. I can click here, click on the box, and it'll bring up the, the illustration and also the, the metadata on the back end. The American Heart Association's checklist to measure cardiovascular health has been updated to include healthy sleep, 
and is now called Life's Essential Eight. Research shows that healthy sleep is essential for optimal heart and brain health. Life's Essential Eight is made up of these measures and behaviors. Diet, physical activity, nicotine exposure, sleep, weight, blood cholesterol, blood sugar, and blood pressure. And for achieving ideal cardiovascular health with specific steps you can take to uh, it circulates through your body in a predictable pattern coming from the body entering the heart Another big category of content are messages. We have over 1,150 messages. These are short and designed to complement other forms of content. They're built right into the right into the platform. And then the final thing on the content area is how we build our priorities, goals, and action plan, which is what makes these care plans and health journeys. And it starts in the care plan by identifying the priority area. The priority areas include of life's essential eight. That includes physical activity, nutrition, weight, tobacco, sleep, blood pressure, cholesterol, and glucose. We've also added mental health and medications. So there's 10 categories to choose from. Once you've identified the priority, then you can go in and you can build your sub goals, which are your goals around the different categories. So whether it's physical activity, nutrition, medications, whatever your, your topic is. And then there's an action plan builder, which allows you then to pick and choose from AHA recommended strategies in, the, in each of these different priority areas. And these cross over so a physical activity or a nutrition or a sleep um, action plan might relate to any one of the priority areas. Now we're going to move to the assessments. In the assessments, we have a wide range from behaviors like symptoms and meds to the biometrics to lifestyle and literacy. We also have these plan assessments, which are combined assessments. If I click here, this is the blood pressure plan assessment. It shows the questions that are routinely asked in the blood pressure plan, as well as the biometrics. You can also click on the JSON view, the code view, and you can actually follow the logic of the, of the assessment. You can see how they branch and what kind of responses and messages they, they produce. And these are combined with the biometric assessments, in this case the blood pressures. So the combination of the responses and the measurement then produce responses back both to the individual as well as to the healthcare professional. You can also use the assessments to build the logic. So here we have a monitored exercise session. If I click here, again these are all of the questions that are built into the assessment 
But in addition to the JSON, you can also click on the logic and you can actually build and follow the logic of the, of the assessment, which in this case is guiding a person through a home-based monitored exercise session. And then finally, we get to the care plans. And these care plans are collections of both content and assessments and put into a form designed to help the person manage their condition. So there are multiple types of plans. We'll start just with a core plan here. And what this does is it takes you through a daily, weekly, monthly routine of how to manage, manage the condition. When you get to day eight, which is the first day in week two, you can see that it, that's where the goal planning starts. And again, that's what differentiates this from just simply a collection of content. If I go back to the content, I can also search for all the different types. So if I search for heart failure, what you're going to see in all of these different condition domains is six versions of the care plan. So a core standard plan, a professional facing plan, and then four segmented versions, a listener. So we're really in listening mode, lighter focus on content, more on assessment and reflection. The motivator is for the person who really wants to, but not sure how or if they can. So it's a little bit more guided, a little bit more, more prescriptive. The motivator is for the person who really wants to, but doesn't have a lot of confidence, not sure if they can. So it's very motivational and inspirational. Heavier, a little bit heavier now on content. The director is for the person who's raring to go and they want a lot of content and they want it, and they want it at a pretty fast pace. So this is really the richest form of the care plan. And then the expert is for the person who's probably a professional themselves and has all of the information they need, but they need to be held much more accountable. So that's how the care plan structure works. So now let's take a look at the back end of how these content items and plans are delivered to a third party solution. The care plan system allows third party access to American Heart Association content and programs in a secured way using token based authentication. To start, we will walk you through the steps to access the API. Step one is to obtain client credentials from the American Heart Association, including a client ID and a client secret that are known to the care plan system and the third party. Step two is to obtain an access token from the care plan authorization server. Before third party applications can access private data from the care plan system, it must obtain this access token that grants access to the API. The token API is used to authenticate the client. I'm now going to access the token API. Click try it out. And I'm going to click the execute. By using the client ID and client secret, I should have received a response with an access token and expire time. This is a successful response, so I'm going to access the token. For step three, I will send the access token to the API using an HTTP authorization header. So I'm going to copy this access token. I'm going to go up to the authorize button. and authorize. Now as a third party vendor, I have access to the content and program APIs. I'm going to click list all existing care plans, select try it out, and execute. And when I do that, it'll show all of the existing care plans in the system. Next, I'm going to enroll a participant in a care plan. 
So I've already entered the, uh, the unique information. I'll click Execute. And you can see I now have a, an enrolled unique participant. Take note, I have ID number 16 here. This person is in the high blood pressure care plan. I'm gonna use this ID number in subsequent demos. I'm now gonna click on list all activities for this participant. Click the try it out button and put in ID number 16 and execute. And now you can see this person has an assessment pending. Have you taken your medications as prescribed? And it also has a message. I'm now gonna go into those activity details. Click try it out. Enter my participant. That message was code 10,000. And when I pull that up, I can see I have the metadata behind here for the message. So it's message 10,000 and it's a welcome message and I have it in both English and in Spanish. And finally, I'm gonna to go to assessments. I'm gonna do the same thing. And I'm gonna go into the details of that assessment. Enrollment ID 16, assessment ID 2001. And we have the, have you taken your medications as prescribed? That's triggered by a yes and a no response. The yes, great, continue to take your medications as prescribed. The no response triggers, please indicate why you're not taking your medications. And then it has follow-up branches to that. Um, I'm experiencing a side effect, my prescription ran out, I can't afford my medications. So that's a brief overview of how the back end to the content and care plan API system works.